Have you ever heard of a spinal headache before? It's Labor Day, so I thought it would be a good day to talk about a fairly common complication that we see when women labor. I presented the case of a 28-year-old female yesterday who underwent a C-section and had spinal anesthesia. It was a very smooth delivery, healthy baby, healthy mom, and mom went home in about 48 hours after delivery. And yes, I'm well aware that during an elective C-section, she likely did not have any labor. I just thought it'd be a good day to talk about it. Right before she went home, she started developing a headache. But then after she got home and the next day pursuing, she had a debilitating headache where she couldn't stand and walk. And the headache was getting worse and worse to where she really couldn't even take care of her own baby. It was better when lying down and worse when standing up. And yeah, many of you guys nailed it right on the head. She has a spinal headache. I've talked about spinal and epidural anesthesia during delivery many times, but I'm just going to quickly summarize it again. Spinal anesthesia is when we inject medication directly into the spinal fluid and that will numb a woman from the abdomen and down and will anesthetize the area for a c-section and that makes you unable to even feel or move your legs temporarily during the delivery epidural is a little bit different it's actually placed into the epidural space so it does not go into the spinal fluid space and a catheter is fed up this is when women labor and it can slowly deliver medication over a period of time and that will actually just help with pain and not anesthetize completely from the waist down. So when you do do a spinal anesthesia or a spinal tap or any reason such as a myelogram to access the spinal fluid space, you do introduce a needle into the spinal fluid and then you remove that needle when you're done and there will be a small little hole. We typically keep patients flat for one to two hours after accessing the spinal fluid and that's so that teeny tiny little hole will seal. In some cases, it doesn't and you can continue to leak spinal fluid and then it'll drain all the way down from your brain and cause a severe headache. You mean something that's poked in my back can actually affect my brain? Well, yeah, that's exactly what I'm saying because the spinal fluid actually circulates and is produced in your brain, goes all the way down, bathes your whole spine and recirculates up to the top. So if you're leaking in a spot down here, it can actually make your brain sag pulls down on the dura up here and can cause an excruciating headache. Remember yesterday when I said she actually felt pain in her left leg when the needle was injected? And that's a very common indication that you're actually in the spinal fluid space and it's totally normal. And that's because the needle actually tickled the left side of nerves going down into her leg. Not unexpected. But what do we do about the leak? The good news is that most of these resolve in 24 hours with just some conservative treatment. That means lying down flat to allow gravity to take off the pressure off of that leak and also hydrating yourself to replenish your CSF and caffeine can actually help. That's because caffeine is a potent cerebral vasoconstrictor and it reduces blood flow to your brain, which can reduce the throbbing that you feel when you have a spinal headache. For headaches that are severe or persist for more than 24 hours after onset, we sometimes do have to intervene. These headaches can also cause visual field deficits like blurry vision or photophobia when you're extremely sensitive to the light. It can cause neck pain, nausea, vomiting, ringing in the ears, dizziness, even trouble hearing, and sometimes seizures. Risk factors that increase the likelihood of developing a spinal headache are patients that are between 18 and 30, female, pregnant, those that have connective tissue disorders, have a history of headaches, or ones where they had multiple punctures with the needle because of difficult access, or even patients that have larger bore catheters or bigger needles that are placed because a bigger needle can make a bigger hole. But literally anyone that has a spinal tap can develop a spinal headache. The diagnosis is typically made clinically and rarely do we have to order any additional tests to help make this diagnosis. If the patient does not respond to conservative treatment, an epidural blood patch has a success rate of over 93%. Essentially what we do is we draw off a little blood from the patient 
and then injected in the region where the patient had the spinal tap done. Once the blood congeals, it acts like a patch to help plug that hole, and it also can cause inflammation in the area, which can help seal that hole as well. In the rare event that an epidural blood patch does not work, sometimes additional workup of the headaches and treatment options, including surgery, may be on the table. In our patient's case, she had an epidural blood patch and all of her symptoms went away within 24 hours. Another case of patient-focused and compassionate care. Remember to always listen to your patients. I hope you guys have a wonderful Labor Day. Take care, and I'll see you guys next week for another case.